Daily in the body snatcher right here. It's a champ. Big up the sport tonight. Come and subscribe. Otherwise, I might pay you guys a visit. So following the video that I done two days ago where King Kong Luis Ortiz said to Joe Joyce in response to Joe Joyce saying that Ortiz turned down the fight with him, I'll fight you, but it has to be on the Tank Davis versus Rolly Romero undercard towards the end of the year. Now there's a bit more to that story, but I'll just focus on that particular subject. So I want to continue with it and here comes the next part of this particular video. This is what King Kong Luis Ortiz had to say. Joe Joyce is a liar and it's very embarrassing to him as a man and as a boxer because at no time has he spoke to me, my manager, Jay Jimenez, my coach, Herman Sacedo. We at King Kong Boxing Camp would love to know who this little ego man spoke to and why he would lie when he knows full well Luis King Kong Ortiz has never turned down a fight in his life. Our camps don't even communicate and we don't even have each other's number. That's Luis Ortiz's statement. Now, I don't need to go through the whole Joe Joyce thing. Quite clearly, King Kong shouldn't even be there anymore. It should be, Luis, I want to fight on other people's undercards, Ortiz. That should be his new tag, okay? Discard the whole King Kong thing from now on, okay? So that's a Joe Joyce situation. But it's the part where he says that King Kong, Ortiz, has never turned down a fight in his life. Oh, really? Oh, really? Okay, so I'm going to go through a bunch of fighters that Luis Ortiz has turned down. And we're going to start off with Dillian White. We're going to start off with him because there's a misconception flying around that Dillian White ducked Luis Ortiz. He walked away from Luis Ortiz. Didn't want that smoke with Luis Ortiz. And even though I, that I've spoke about this before, and I'm going to speak about it again in this video, there'll be plenty of people out there who will pretend that they haven't heard this from me. They will still continue with the narrative, Dylan White ducked Ortiz. Why? Because they have sad little lives and just want to troll. But people will know when I speak about Dylan White, there are certain things that I know that a lot of other people won't know. Okay? People know why. Now, here's the whole situation. Okay, so the WBC, they ordered Dylan White to fight King Kong Luis Ortiz for the secondary mandatory position. Not mandatory, so again, there seems to be a misconception that it's for the mandatory, it wasn't. For secondary mandatory. At this point, the first mandatory hadn't even taken place yet, as in Dominic Brazil, who shouldn't have been there in the first place. It should have been Brazil versus Dillian White. That's what it should have been. But the WBC screwed over Dillian White, lied to Eddie Hearn, when they said that Brazil versus Eric Molina would not be a final eliminator for WBC mandatory. They lied, okay, is what happened. OK, so they said, OK, Dillian, you can fight for the mandatory position, but it'll be a secondary mandatory against Luis Ortiz. Dillian White was like, firstly, jog on. Because I should be fighting for the mandatory. I should be fighting Brazil. I shouldn't be having to fight anybody, Luis Ortiz or not. I shouldn't have to be fighting anybody for a secondary mandatory. Either way, Deontay Wilder, he came out. He said to Dillian White, you fight Luis Ortiz, you beat him. You're guaranteed me next. Dylan White then contacts Deontay Wilder and the WBC and says, okay, I'll fight Luis Ortiz, but I beat him. Not only will I beat him, but I'll knock him out. Deontay Wilder defends that bell against me next. Nobody else but me next. And you sign something to say that that's what will happen. Wilder and that refused to do so. Anyway, we can fast forward because there's a little bit more to this story. So... I spoke to Dillian White probably two days before the Joseph Parker fight was announced, before they had the press conference. I spoke to Dillian White, we're having a phone conversation, and he says, oh, just to let you know that in a couple of days' time, I'm having a press conference to announce my next fight. I'm like, okay, cool, sweet. Who is it? Luis Ortiz is what Dillian White told me. So... Two days before the press conference, he's telling me Luis Ortiz. Now, it's no surprise. I usually know who it is that Dean White's fighting beforehand, okay? I've told you guys this many times. And Luis Ortiz is the name that Dean White told me. Two days later, the press conference happens. To everybody's surprise, out walks Joseph Parker, not Luis Ortiz. It's either later on or maybe... No, actually, I, I think it was the next day. I spoke with Dean again. I said, oh, mate, what happened with... Um, Luis Ortiz, he said you're going to fight Luis Ortiz. Yeah, Luis Ortiz walked away. He decided not, not to take the fight. And I'll tell you how much it was as well. 
I don't know if this is confidential or not, but two million. Luis Ortiz turned down two million to headline with Dillian White at the O2 Arena. That's why it was a last minute rush. For those of you who will remember the press conference with Joseph Parker, that it was a last minute, they got it done within a matter of hours because they'd already announced that they're going to have a press conference with Dillian White. It was Joseph Parker was actually a replacement for Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz was in the region of two million. I don't know whether it's pound or dollars. So there's that one. Okay. So again, anybody who says that Dillian White ducked Luis Ortiz, that's the facts of it. You don't have to take my word for it. Contact Dillian White. He will verify everything that I've just said. Contact Eddie Hearn. He will verify everything that I've just said. So King Kong, you ducked Dillian White. You ducked him. Oh, also, before we close off the Dillian White saga, Luis Ortiz, he did actually release a statement once and said that, yeah, I'll fight Dillian White, but it has to be on the undercard of Fury and Wilder 1. Then the very next day, by the way, it's announced that Luis Ortiz is fighting Travis Kaufman. Not my opinion, people. Facts. This is what he does. So him saying about how Joe Joyce should fight him on the Tank Davis undercard, this is history repeating itself because he said the same thing about Dillian White. Luis Ortiz is content to be in somebody's undercard fighters. Anyway, let's move on from Dillian White. Anthony Joshua. Luis Ortiz ducked Anthony Joshua on two occasions. Again, there's this huge misconception that maybe Eddie Hearn signed up Luis Ortiz to keep Ortiz away from Anthony Joshua. That is not what happened. I'll tell you this for a fact. Again, not my opinion, but for fact. Anthony Joshua, he defeated Vladimir Klitschko and added the WBA belt to his IBF belt. When he was fought Klitschko, the IBF had already ordered Anthony Joshua to fight his IBF mandatory. At the time, it was Kubrat Pulev. Okay? Either way, he fights Vladimir Klitschko. They allowed the unification, if you want to call it that. He defeated Klitschko, he became WBA champion. Luis Ortiz was the mandatory. Okay, he was the interim champion. Okay, so he was the mandatory for the WBA. So Luis Ortiz became Anthony Joshua's mandatory. But because Joshua already had the IBF and already had a mandatory in place, that meant, as per the rules of a unified champion, it goes in day order. IBF first, that will be Kubrat Pulev. Kubrat Pulev ended up pulling out the fight due to injury. Carlos Takam stepped in to replace because he was next on the IBF ranking list. Okay. Luis Ortiz didn't like that. Luis Ortiz saying he shouldn't be fighting Pulev. He shouldn't be fighting Takam. He should be fighting me. And he petitioned to the WBA to get Anthony Joshua stripped. Why did he do that? Because he didn't want to fight Anthony Joshua. Why did he do that? Because he'd already agreed to go fight Deontay Wilder. He wanted the WBA to strip Anthony Joshua so he can walk in against Deontay Wilder as WBA World Heavyweight Champion. Somewhat of a unification with Wilder. But it bit him in the backside because he ended up failing the Wilder test, if you remember, for that uh, high blood pressure medication. So that fight never actually happened. And because he failed the Wilder test, the WBA dropped him as the mandatory. So all Ortiz had to do was wait for Joshua to fulfill his IBF mandatory against Takam. Then he was next. Eddie Hearn even released statements to them and said, all you got to do is wait for Joshua to complete his RBF mandatory, then you are next. We will sign a contract right now, if you want, to verify this, that you are next. You can fight on his undercard if you want. You can go fight on another card if you want. Take an interim fight or do nothing. Just, just wait for the fight. It's your choice. Ortiz didn't want to do it. He wanted to go fight Wilder instead. That's how that whole situation played out. Fast forward to more recent, Anthony Joshua offered him seven million to headline against Anthony Joshua for the unified heavyweight world titles at Madison Square Garden. Seven million. His team, as in Luis Ortiz, turned down the fight. Seven million. I said this before, and people go, "No, that never happened, done it." Are you living under a rock? Google it. His own team even put out a statement saying, yeah, there was an offer of seven million from Anthony Joshua and we turned it down. So don't tell me it didn't happen. It happened when his own team say it happened. It happened. King Kong can say, well, I don't know anything about. You are head of the team. 
If people are speaking for you, it's because you have given them permission to do so. So effectively, you turn down the fight. That's how it works. If you want to go sue a business, well, the business owner is the one who gets sued. King Kong Boxing, that's King Kong Luis Ortiz's business. Whether Jay Jimenez turned down the fight, whether somebody else on the team turned down the fight, effectively, the buck lies with you. You turned down seven million to fight Anthony Joshua. Not my opinion, fact. Otto Wallin, another one. Otto Wallin, he did a recent interview and he was saying that because he's like part of the PBC, yes, he's a Salita fighter, but of course he fights on PBC shows, the PBC want him to fight in-house fights. He'd already had one against Dominic Brazil, previously with uh, Travis Kaufman. His next one was going to be another PBC fighter. He tried to get Charles Martin. Charles Martin didn't want to fight him. They were talking with Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz wasn't even responding. Nothing was happening, which is why when an offer came through for him to fight Dillian White, he took that fight because Luis Ortiz didn't want to fight Otto Wallin. He didn't want to do it. Now, of course, now, now we've got this Joe Joyce situation. Again, it's a duck. He's turned down the fight because by asking somebody who can headline a fight like Joe Joyce to fight on somebody else's undercard, a Tank Davis undercard of all, of all people, I don't know how big he is in America, but over here, he ain't, he ain't no pay-per-view headliner. He ain't. He's Saturday night, fight night at best. But still, regardless, okay? Ortiz, you're not going to get paid the amount of money to fight Joe Joyce on, uh, on anybody's undercard compared to what you would get if you headlined against Joe Joyce in the UK. So think about it from a financial perspective. Also, Joe Joyce is a WBO mandatory there's that up for grabs. He's a WBC silver champion. There's that up for grabs. And you don't want to do it because you want to go fight on somebody else's undercard. Don't tell people that you have never turned down a fight in your life. I've just given you four names off the top of my head. And if I really looked at it, I'm sure I'll find some more. In fact, there's even a story about Shannon Briggs at one point, but I can't really talk about it because uh, I don't know the details of that, much, of that too much. Ortiz, stop lying to people, all right? Okay, you've turned down multiple fights. You should be chomping at the bit to fight a Joe Joyce. You ain't getting any younger. You're getting too old for this now. This is your opportunity here. But who's going to fight on somebody else's undercard? Who? A Latvian bin man. Who knows? Drop your thoughts below. Click thumbs up. Subscribe. Catch you on the next video.